Full disclosure, guys, Driven is not the sequel to Drive, like I might have thought it was. <laughs> it's not. Hey up guys, so more Venice Film Festival coverage for you. Today's film up for discussion is Driven. Driven is directed by Nick Ham, who directed one of my favorite cult horror films, The Hole, and is written by Colin Bateman, who wrote the screenplay for Nick Ham's previous film, The Journey. Driven is set in 1977 America and tells the story of FBI informant Jim Hoffman, who's played by Jason Sudeikis, who after getting busted with a plane load of cocaine in Bolivia, by special agent Benedict Tissa, who's played by Corey Stoll, must work as an undercover informant so Benedict can bust the big fish drug boss who's called Morgan Hetrick, who's played by Michael Kudlitz in this film, who you guys might recognize as Abraham from The Walking Dead. If Jim doesn't help Benedict to put Morgan away, he'll end up going to prison. So unbeknownst to his wife, Ellen, who's played by Judy Greer in this film, as well as their two boys, the family is relocated to Southern California so Jim can begin his undercover FBI work. And upon arrival, Jim learns that one of his neighbors is the Pontiac GTO car designer, John DeLorean, who was semi-famous at the time. They form a friendship and John tells Jim about his next car design, the DeLorean, which is made of stainless steel, it's complete with airbags, and it's got a suspension system that's designed by a computer, but most iconically is the wing door designs. As Jim points out, it's very sci-fi, which is a playful nod to all the Back to the Future fans that are watching this film. But John's plans for the DeLorean car are somewhat stalled by a cash flow problem, so he asks Jim for his help because he knows Jim has some shady business connections to drug lords like Morgan Hetrick who can help finance his latest car design and get it processed and manufactured. Jim sees this as his way out, so he makes a deal with the FBI. If he can deliver both Hetrick and DeLorean to the FBI for using drug money, then he can live with his family in peace and witness protection for the rest of his life. So what did I think of Driven? I enjoyed this film, guys. It's not very often that you get films that are based off real-life crime stories that are this silly and funny. Driven's plot is quite insane in itself. Plus, when you've got the comedic talents of Jason Sudeikis, Judy Greer, and Corey Stoll in your cast, then you know you're in for some laughs. I think Jason Sudeikis was terrific as Jim. He oozes well-meaning charm, and he adds those little Sudeikis ticks into his performance. He's a bit of a goofball, but he's a fun lead to watch. I've never really been able to take Jason Sudeikis too seriously, so this film is kind of the perfect project for him because the content of the film is quite serious, but the execution of it is quite light-hearted. As his wife Ellen says in the film, you're not a bad man, you're just an idiot, which plays perfectly to Jason Sudeikis' character type, like in Where the Millers or Horrible Bosses. He never plays a bad man, he just plays an idiotic man. So yeah, he's perfect here. Lee Pace gives a suave, dashing, and cunning performance as DeLorean. And Pace knows the power of a pause. There are a few moments in this film where you get to watch and see him think, and you can really see the cogs in his head turning. He's a passionate and ambitious man, and he often regales his guests with stories about his dad growing up or the American dream. So yeah, there's a magnetism to him that Lee Pace emits. I liked Judy Greer in this as Ellen Hoffman, particularly a scene where she and Jim are talking about marbles. I was definitely chuckling quite hard at that scene. But I wish we got a little bit more from her. Like, she eventually catches on to the truth about Jim's double life. And this does inject a bit of drama into the film. But it gets forgotten about quite quickly, and I wish we got to see more repercussions of the truth coming out for Jim. And sadly, it just doesn't happen, and it just sort of fizzles out. But what's truly remarkable about this film is the behind-the-scenes stuff, because this film was primarily filmed in Puerto Rico, and during production, Puerto Rico was hit by Hurricane Maria, and this basically obliterated all the sets and locations that they were going to use for this film. So they basically had to pull all the Puerto Rican people who are working on this film together to work on it, to fix it, and you wouldn't know from watching this film, the end product is so beautiful, you wouldn't know that they were filming this film in a place which had no electrical power or no running water, okay? It's a real testament to what human beings can do in tough times, this film, and yeah, the end product is astonishing when you consider the circumstances of how they were shooting it. I can see Driven being enjoyed by audiences, but I don't think it's likely to catch much traction during award season. Films based off true life events usually make for great Academy Awards bait, like The Help or Argo or Bridge of Spies, but Bateman's script is a little bit on the glossy side, and also the ending of this film lacks impact. 
It is enjoyable, but it doesn't have any oomph, so it doesn't really stay with you. Let's ask those three questions. Would I watch this again? Maybe. It is enjoyable, but not particularly special. Would I recommend it for you guys? If you're looking for something easy viewing and quite funny, then yes. But I wouldn't say you need to rush to see this film. And what score am I going to give it out of 10? I'm going to give it Driven a score of 6.5 out of 10. There you go, guys. That is my review of Driven. Are you guys excited for this film? Will you be off to see it? And if you have seen it, be sure to let me know what you thought of it in the comments section below. If you guys do like this content, don't forget to click that subscribe button. And of course, if you want to add me on Twitter, Instagram, or Stardust, all that information is in the description link below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. For more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture, I'm Lee Carefield, and I'll see you next time.